Hello everyone. Welcome back. Please comment, rate, subscribe, folks. Comment, rate, subscribe, like the videos. Also share the videos. I want to thank you folks for liking, watching, and sharing my videos. You people are the absolute best. Seriously, I appreciate you folks. So listen, this is my reaction to the Jets' first round pick of Makai Becton in this 2020 draft, man. Woo. Listen, the board started off kind of odd. You know what I'm saying? Like there were some things that people thought was, that was going to happen that did not happen. Um, you know, Andrew Thomas being the first off the board, everyone knows I loved Andrew Thomas. I was screaming about this kid, raving about him, was hoping that he would still be there at 11, the Giants take him. Okay, understandable. You know, I understand why the Giants didn't pass on that prospect to each his own. Then you had, uh, you know, the other type of wills go off the board. So you're like, whoa, okay, he's going off the board. And then the picks just kept coming. And then I'm starting to see, as I'm watching this, I'm seeing Tristan Wharfs, and Makai Becton just keeps sliding, keeps sliding, keeps sliding. And then before you know it, boom, we're sitting at 11 and Wars and Becton are sitting right there. And I'm saying, whoa. I'm saying, whoa. <laughs> like how this this played out in our favor so much because I remember pre-draft, we were talking, you know, maybe at best one of the tackles would be there. I, I talked about, you know, the possibility of no tackles being there and us really, you know, being out on our butts and having to scramble for something, you know what I'm saying? Or make a trade, you know, Trent Williams, making a trade for that to really solidify uh, that spot instead of, you know, going with the, a young tackle in this draft. And so having things play out the way it did, I, I was pleasantly surprised. I really, really was. So I'm, I'm looking around and I'm going, okay, Jets in on the board. Boom. The clock just starts ticking. And I'm like, okay. I was cool about the first, like, minute. I was like, okay. It's all gravy. You know what I'm saying? Whoop, whoop. We in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got our picks. All right. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure they just high-fiving each other and laughing. And, you know, they, they got the pick. And then another minute goes by. And I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? I get it. You just want to take your time. You know what I'm saying? Be Mr. Cool Guy. And then it was like another minute went by. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> I'm not going to lie to y'all. I started getting nervous. Okay. <laughs> and I don't, you know, I don't get nervous, bruh. Like, I, I don't get nervous, folks. I, I never really get nervous. But the draft history <laughs> of this team, okay, the draft history of this team, the first thing I started thinking was, are they thinking about going somewhere else outside of offensive tackle? <laughs> because if you take a corner or if you take something that we like, a defensive tackle, dude, <laughs> it was going to be a bad day. <laughs> I'm not going to I was going to have a bad night and then I was going to have a bad day. You know what I'm saying today? I, I, I'm telling you right now, it was going to be bad. You know what I mean? Like, I was just, I, it was just going to be bad. So I started to get worried. I really did start to get worried after uh, quite a bit of time started to go off the clock. I was like, well, what's taking so long? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, <laughs> what could you possibly be deciding here? Like, one of our biggest needs is offensive tackle, whether it be left tackle or right tackle. You got two, you know, solid guys in that, you know, out of the top four are still sitting right here in your laps. And it's like, you guys are, what are you even thinking about here? Make the selection, let's go. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not going to lie, I got nervous. You know, comment down below. Let me know if you folks got nervous when that was moving as well. <laughs> but, so, I got a little nervous. I got a little nervous and I started, you know what I'm saying? I started to get, you know, I started sweating a little bit. But, I, you know, it was just a bead or two. It wasn't nothing crazy, but it was the two beads. I just... I patted my, patted my two beads. I just went like this. And I was like, okay, I was back. You know what I'm saying? I got faith. I, I'm a Jets fan. Let's go, baby. You know what I'm saying? I, I gave him one of these. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? And then the pick comes across. They say, hey, the pick's in. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. All right, let's go. Let's go. And they say, okay, you know, at, at 11, the New York Jets select Makai Becton. And I said to myself, okay, okay. And immediately, I said, okay. Okay, okay, I like that. I said, okay, I like that. But my second thought was, I was a little shocked, just a little bit, 
that they went Becton over Wars. I was just a little shocked. And I know that there was a lot of other uh, Jets fans, you know, social media that hit me up as well, various platforms that were saying that they wanted Wars. And, you know, they were kind of shocked as well that we took Becton over Wars. Understandable. I don't think that Becton's a bad selection at all. As a matter of fact, you know, talking pre-draft and all these things, I, everybody pretty much thought that Becton was going to be uh, there for us and that he would be the last tackle that would be on the board if, if any of the tackles were there, that he would be the last tackle on the board and that we would take him. Um, so I wasn't put off by the pick at all. I like the selection of Becton. Again, my two things with him still stand. I'm still worried about... Um, his ability to, you know, keep his weight on the up and up so that he's not getting too heavy. Uh, but again, this is the NFL facility. It's the NFL. They're going to give him a solid diet plan. And I just hope that he's, you know, strict in that dieting so that he stays at the weight that he needs to stay at to play. Because if he gets way too big, we're going to have issues with him. Okay. And the second thing, again, that drug test that he popped on, that was my second concern pre-draft. I made a video and I talked about it. Um, I was a little worried. But if Joe Douglas feels like that's not, you know, wasn't that big of an issue. And as also as well, I, I read reports, various reports that a lot of other teams didn't really think it was a big issue as well. Okay. You know what I'm saying? If he popped on a drug test for something that really, whatever it was, and it's not really a big deal. Okay. If you feel comfortable with that, hey, Joe Douglas is putting his name on it. Uh, but outside of that stuff, I think the talent, the kid has talent. Like he's not, I don't think he's bad at all. This guy, he's a mauler. And, I mean, he's gritty. Uh, he's a finisher. He will pancake you. I know a lot of people kind of look at his technique from time to time and are saying that he's a little sloppy at times um, and that he can get away with stuff because he's just big. He's, he's so huge. He's massive, dude. He is massive. That dude's literally a mountain. And they say that, you know, in, in college, yeah, he's a mountain, but when you get in here in the NFL, you're going to have to be a little bit better and more sound in your technique. And I understand those takes as well. You know, I'm not I'm not pushing those takes out the door. I'm not saying, hey, you're wrong. I get those takes as well. Uh, but at the same time, at this NFL level, he's going to get a certain type of coaching. Um, and our offensive line coach is going to be able to come in and hopefully work with him and kind of clean up some things. And I think that every player pretty much uh, coming out of college has something that they need to work on. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, generally, especially offensive linemen, whether it be tackles, guards, all of them, you know, can get better or become more refined in their technique. So um, that's fine. Um, but man, I, I, I like the selection. And I like the pick. Um, I was just really nervous and I'm glad that we didn't take a defensive tackle. You know what I'm saying? Or something we, it was like, that would just leave your head spinning. I'm really glad that we um, really addressed a need uh, along the offensive line. And really try to, you know, put something in place to help protect Sam. Now, again, there's still other needs along the line. And, you know, the, the second round's coming up. And, and we'll figure out what we're going to do as, as we continue to go forward. But to me, I think the Jets, you know, made a solid selection here. Uh, I know a lot of people were talking about his boom or bust factor being really high as well. Like, you know, because he's got a really high ceiling. A really high ceiling. But a lot of people are saying if, if he don't work out, then he's... He's really not going to be good. So, you know, I get that as well. But, I mean, I think the kid's going to be decent. I think he's going to be decent. And, you know, I can't wait to really see him out there. <laughs> you know, dude, they're going to have to get him. <laughs> he is so big. I don't know. They're going to have to get him a, 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 a 5X, 6X jersey. I mean, that dude is huge, man. <laughs> that dude is so big, man. But, um <laughs> You know, I, I can't wait to see him out there, you know what I'm saying, do what he can to protect Sam. Um, I know that he's being brought in and everybody's excited because, you know, he could be our potential start, a potential starting left tackle. So, you know, I want to see how, if, if that works out there. But, man, this, this is, if, if he pans, man, this is going to do a world of good for Sam Darnold. And not just for Sam Darnold. And I talked about this before. Um, this isn't just about getting protection for Sam Darnold. He is our franchise quarterback. But this is also about getting some running lanes for Le'Veon Bell. And nobody's talking about that. <laughs> like, like almost at all. Like no one's talking about that. And I've been, I've been saying, listen, we were talking about Le'Veon Bell and, and the impact that he could possibly have on us offensively last year. You know, our fans were raving for him. When Mike McCagnan was able to, to sign him officially and get him in the door, 
Dude, it was like, oh, God, he's a generational talent. He's going to turn this team around. He's the best player, you know, offensively we had since Curtis Martin and so on and so forth. And, you know, he's been struggling. Not just the play calling of Adam Gaze, which has been horrific, but there were also next to no running lanes. Our, our line truly struggled last year in pass blocking, and it wasn't very good in run blocking either. So if Makai Becton, you know, can come in and really legitimize that left tackle position, um, and, and start opening up holes over there, man, it's going to do a world of good for Le'Veon Bell. A world of good. So I like this selection. Um, I want you folks to comment down below. Uh, let me know what you folks think about that, about Makai Becton, him being selected. Were you shocked uh, that we selected him over uh, Worfs? Uh, I know a lot of other fans were as well. Comment down below if you just wanted Worfs and let me know why. Because um, I love you know reading you folks' comments and going back and forth with you folks. Um, the other thing that I was kind of a little, I thought was kind of a missed opportunity, man, and I, I kept talking about it, was the potential to trade uh, Jamal Adams and get some capital back to really help build his team. And this is, this is one of the things that I, I, I continue to watch the draft after that. And I saw C.D. Lamb slide down to 17 with the Cowboys. And I said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, man, you want to talk about, I was like, Joe Douglas, are you going to do this? You know what I'm saying? Are you going to do this? Are you going to address our left tackle position and address our wide receiver position and get a number one wide receiver? Are you going to do this right now, dude? Are you going to be a GOAT? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he didn't make the move, so Jamal Adams is, you know, still here. He didn't make the trade. There was, you know, there was no trade made. But, man, you get C.D. Lamb. And Becton, and you know, I, I think again, we, we we've gotten more picks for Adams as well. Whew. You really set yourself up nice, because again, the second round is 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 coming as well, and you would have had some capital to really continue to play in these later rounds too, and possibly continue to, you know, bolster up that wide receiving core after you solidified your offensive line at left tackle, or you can also continue to to build your offensive line as well with that capital. Because there's still a need along this offensive line. Um, that right guard spot, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. And that right tackle spot, I mean, we got Fant. So if Makai does end up starting at left tackle, then I'm guessing Fant's going to play right tackle. But, God, I don't like George Fant. I, I really don't. But, hey, you know, Jamal Adams is here. So, obviously, they didn't move him. But, man, C.D. Lamb. Whew, that would have been something. That would have been something crazy. I mean, that dude is a... A step in number one, you know what I'm saying? A step in number one, and we ain't had that in a while, but there's still some wide receivers uh, in that second round that I think that we can get and possibly make an impact, but I don't know if they'll be there when we select. We might have to move up, so comment down below. Let me know what you folks think about that as well. I want to hear your thoughts about the second round um, and who you'd like to see selected in that second round. Um, is there a guy that you think is kind of being slept on that you think will be there when we select? Are you concerned about... Uh, the possible run on wide receivers, you know, because wide receiver, a lot of these guys could be gone before we select at all. Is that making you a little bit worried about this second round coming up? So comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. I love hearing from you people. You folks have a good one. Go Jets. Peace.